Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this episode of Learn to Play Hearthstone, I'm going to take a look at Hearthstone mathematics and the probabilities behind card draw, behind discover and behind mulligan. In order to make good decisions on what you need to look for, how you need to build your decks, how you need to mulligan, you need to know a little bit about probabilities. And while card game probabilities are possible to calculate by hand, you can of course calculate, okay, what are the odds that some things are not happening in each draw, and then you can use the rule of complements and subtract that from one, and then you can get to a result. But doing math by hand is hard, and it takes a lot of time. So, in practice, what you want to use when you're doing card game math is a hypergeometric calculator. There's a link down below in the description, and I'm going to tell you how to use it. So, hypergeometric calculation looks like this. So, there's the population size, which is the, actually the number of cards left. For example, if you're calculating probabilities to draw cards from deck, then that is the remaining deck size. Number of successes equals the number of targets that you want to draw. And sample size is just the number of cards that you will draw, and then how many successes do they have to be in the sample. In order to make this a little bit more tangible, let's look at a practical scenario. I had this situation in a game recently. My opponent had six cards left in his deck. Three of them were bombs that I had shuffled in. He needed to draw two bombs in order to die, and as you can see, he did die. Woohoo! But what were the odds that he would die given this position. We can use the hypergeometric calculator. Population size, he had six cards in the deck, so the population size is six. Number of successes, it's a success whenever he draws a bomb. The number of successes in the population is three. I need him to draw two bombs, and whenever he draws a bomb, he draws another card, so he need to draw two cards, both of which will be bombs. And with a simple hypergeometric calculation, we arrive to the conclusion that Probably that he does die is 20% in this case. But the usefulness of hypergeometric calculation does not end here. We can also use this to calculate things like discovers. Discover is an interesting mechanic in Hearthstone because it allows you to pick one of three options, so it greatly increases your chances over simply getting a random card. But what can we do about discovers? Discovers are simple hypergeometric calculations if there are only class cards involved. So let's say we're playing Fighter Witch Doctor. If you're holding a dragon, discover a spell. And discover rules state that you can only discover neutral cards or class cards, and all spells are class cards, so you will discover a card from your class. So for example, Mage has 35 spells in standard at the moment. So what are the odds that I can discover a specific Mage spell? Well, sample size is 3. I'm always offered 3 choices and none of these can be the same, so it's the same as I would put those 35 mage spells into a deck and I would draw the top 3 cards. And number of successes in the population is 1, number of successes in the sample is 1, so I'm looking for one specific card. And the probability that I can find that is 8.6%. But the neat thing about hypergeometric calculators is that it's easy to also look into more complex scenarios. So, for example, let's say I'm looking for a secret. I need to get to play a secret this turn. I'll use my Fighter Witch Doctor and I'm looking for a secret. There are 35 mage spells in standard. Six of them are secrets. I get to choose from three cards. At least one of them has to be a secret in order for me to succeed. So the probability that at least one is going to be a secret is 44.2%. As you can see, this is way, way above the probability of just getting a random mage spell. 6 out of 35, just getting one randomly, or 6 out of 35 in discover becomes 44.2%, a great increase. However, most discovers are unfortunately not quite as easy to calculate, because there's this thing about class cards, neutral cards and class card weights. Because class cards are weighted in the discover whenever there are class cards and neutral cards in the pool. You're four times as likely to discover a class card as you are to discover a neutral card. So then we cannot do a simple hypergeometric calculation anymore. Because if I'm offered the first card I'm offered, if it's a class card, then that's actually the same as drawing four cards out of that deck. If you imagine the discover pool to be a deck because it cannot be offered again so i'm essentially i'm picking the top card okay it's a class card so i would take away the three other copies of that same card from the deck before i draw the next one 
And this cannot be modeled with simple hypergeometric calculation. This needs to be modeled with Markov chains. With Markov chains, we are able to take this into account so that whenever there is a class card drawn, we can remove those additional copies from the deck before we draw the next one. And whenever there's a neutral draw, then we just draw the next one right away. But you don't want to be doing this by hand. Luckily, there has been a calculator for specifically this purpose around already for years, and there is a link down below in the description. The calculator originally had drop down menus for all the discover cards so that it would populate the sample pool with the right number of cards. Unfortunately, it hasn't been updated in a while, but you can manually update the numbers in order to get the results you want. Here is an example of using that calculator. Let's say I'm playing Heist Baron Dogwaggle, I get to choose a fantastic treasure. I choose the treasure that allows me to discover a legendary minion. And now, I want to discover a rush minion. There are 8 rogue legendary minions, there are 40 neutrals, and 2 of these neutral minions have rush. So in the calculator, I will input the class weight, is always the same. There were 40 neutrals, there are 8 class cards, and 2 of the neutrals are my targets. And in response, the calculator will let me know a number of probabilities. But I'm mostly interested in the probability of my outs, so probability to find one of those two rush minions is 8.38%. The calculator also gives me the information that getting one specific neutral card is 4.25%, and getting a specific rogue legendary is 16.25%. So with the help of this tool, I can narrow down the options if I need to use discover cards to figure out what is the best strategy for using these discover cards. Are things that I want to happen too unlikely to really make that a viable path or are they pretty good odds so that I should be taking that path in a specific game situation? Finally, let's take a look at mulligan decisions. Mulligan on Hearthstone is unfortunately it's pretty complicated because you get different number of cards depending on whether you're on the play or whether you're on the coin and then you shuffle some cards back into the deck but when you redraw cards in the Mulligan you cannot get back those cards that you just discarded and then there's the final one draw from turn one when those cards are also back in the deck. So in order to calculate Mulligans with the hypergeometric calculator we actually need to do four different calculations. I'll walk you through one, just to give you an idea how it is done. So in this example, I'm looking for one of six cards and I'm on the play. So my deck, my deck has 30 cards in it. There are six cards, I want to find one of those six cards. And my initial draw that's being offered to me is three cards. And I would like there to be at least one success in this sample. But we're going to be using the rule of complements in order to calculate this. So what I'm actually interested in here is the probability that there are no cards that I'm looking for in my initial hand. And I need to note down this figure 0 0.498 and so on. Second step, now I didn't get any of the cards I wanted. I'll do a full mulligan. I throw all those three cards away. And now there's 27 cards in the deck. Those three cards have been set aside. And there's still the same six successes. And I'm drawing another three cards to replace the original three. But once again, I will fail to find any of the cards I want. And I want to note down the probability that I can't find any of them, which is 0 0.4547. Things don't look good, but we have one more draw. Now we have our three cards and we're going to draw one more card for turn one. Now the cards that I mulliganed away have been put back into the deck. The deck is 27 cards. There are still those six successes in the deck and I'm going to draw one more card. But once again, I will fail. And I want to know the probability that I will fail, and that is 0 0.777. After all that failing, we can finally do the final calculation, and this one cannot be done with the hypergeometric calculator. You have to get a regular calculator for this. We can put it all together using complements, because the probability that I don't find a single one of the cards that I look for, and the probability that I have at least one of the cards that I'm looking for, together these are 100%. Either I will have at least one card, or I will have none. So we can calculate the probability that I will find at least one card, now that we know all the probabilities that I don't find any. So that would be 1 minus all these multiplied together, and that is 0 0.82 and so on. So probably to find one of six cards that I hard mulligan for, 
photo turn 1 when I'm on the play is 82.4%. But you're not going to do that math every time. And no one else is going to either. Because Hearthstone has been out for a few years, lots of people have already done the math. And for example, there's a link in the description to one table that sums up the results of various probabilities for when you're on the play, for when you're on the coin, when you're looking for a number of specific cards. Adding this table too, we can see going first, I'm going to mulligan for one of six cards. I will have at least one 82.4% of the time, which is exactly the result that we got by going through the hard way. So what does this matter? Typically, your mulligan decisions are pretty guided already. You're going to have a specific cards that you mulligan for and what the probability of getting those is doesn't really matter because you already know that these are the cards that I seek. This is more of a thing that you might consider when you're building decks, for example. How likely do you want to make some things to happen? How many one drops do you want to put in your deck, for example? That was a basic crash course into Hearthstone mathematics. Using the hypergeometric calculator, in order to calculate various instances of okay, I need to draw something, I need to get some card within specific number of draws, what are my odds? What are my odds to find one of specific set of cards? Looking into the discover mechanic, what are my odds to discover things when I'm looking for cards from just the class card pool or when I'm looking for cards from a pool that contains both class and neutral cards, taking into account the weighting of the class cards. And finally, the mulligan. What odds to find the cards that I want in the mulligan if there's a specific number of cards in my deck? With just a couple of simple tools and tables, you're able to make much more informed decisions when you're playing Hearthstone. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.